Number eight says an alert physics student stands beside the track as a train rolls slowly past. He notes the frequency of the train's whistle is 490 hertz when the train is approaching him and 471 hertz when the train is receding from him. Use these frequencies. He calculates the speed of the train. What value does he find? Okay, so there's two ways to solve this problem, and I'm going to show you both ways really fast. I'm not going to give you a really good, strong reasoning behind both ways, because that would take longer than what I want for this video. It would take about 20 minutes. Okay, so the first way is we can solve for the velocity of, this, of the source using the Doppler equation. So um, the, the velocity of the source is equal to the velocity that sound travels through the medium times the frequency of the observer minus the frequency of the source um, minus the velocity of the observer times the frequency of the source all of that divided by the frequency of the of the observer so all I did is I took the Doppler equation of frequency of the observer equals frequency of the source times velocity plus the velocity of the observer divided by the velocity minus velocity of the source. I took that equation, I solved for velocity of the source. That's what we want to know is how fast the source is moving. Then you can just plug in your numbers. For velocity, we know that it's uh, roughly 345 on an average day times the frequency of the observer. Uh, let's just start with the 490. So if this guy is moving at four, if he's hearing it at 490, it's coming towards him. And since it's coming towards him, what we have to remember to do is, is on the velocity of the source, we have to make that a positive number. So this is going to be a positive number. And so um, the, we got 490 minus the frequency of the source. So what is the frequency of the source? We know that, that as it's leaving, he hears it, or as it's coming toward, towards him, he hears it at 490. As it's uh, leaving, he hears it at 471. So we could take that and subtract, and we would get approximately uh, 19, a difference of 19. And so if we divide that difference by 2, we get, uh, we get 9.5. And so what we can do is we, we can subtract 9.5 from 490. So 490 minus 9.5 equals 480. 480.5. That's the that's the frequency of the source. So we can put 480, 480.5. Now figuring out how I I know that for sure is a longer thing. I'm not going to show that because it would take too long. Um, but if you're curious, inbox me. So we can divide that by the. Uh, actually, we can we can subtract that from the velocity of the observer, which is zero times times the frequency of the source, so that's going to be zero, so that's going to cancel out. Divide, and then we can divide that by the frequency of the observer, so divide that by 490. So if you do that, you're going to get an answer of roughly 6.6887. Now, uh, just a, a word of warning, whenever you, if you solve for it as if the train's coming towards you and you use 490 right here, then you're going to get 6.687. If you solve this using the, the frequency where the train is moving away, and you're using 471 here and 471 here, uh, you're going to get, you should get a negative answer, but also at the same time, um, you, this will change from like 6.68 to, to 6.958. So, and I don't really think that it's that much of a difference. What this tells you is, he didn't really hear it at 490 or at 471. It was about 490 and about 471. So there's there was some other frequency if this tra because this train can't be going two speeds at the same time. The answer I plugged in on WebAssign was the 6.6887. It took it just fine. Now I think this way is actually a little bit faster to do, and so I'm going to show you this way as well. Um, if you take the the wavelength that you would get at four at 471 the wavelength you get at 471 subtract it from the wavelength that you get at 490 it should equal two times the velocity of the source times the time time the 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 um, the uh, period so this should be a capital T rather the period times the period at the 490 now it doesn't give us the period in the problem, but it gives us the frequency at 490. So we know that the, the period at 490 is equal to 1 over the frequency at 490. 
So we can actually rewrite this equation, the, the, the wavelength at 471 minus the wavelength at 490 is equal to 2 times the velocity of the source over, over the frequency at 490. Now the only thing that takes a little bit of extra explanation is this, this wavelength at 471 and this wavelength at 490. How, how do I come up with that? Well, I know that the, the velocity equals the distance over the time, right? So the distance is the wavelength. So velocity equals the wavelength over, over the period. And I can use this, and I can, uh, I can use this and multiply. So the wavelength is going to be equal to the velocity times the period, and the period is 1 over the frequency, so I could say that the wavelength, the wavelength is equal to the velocity over the frequency. And so the velocity is, is always going to be the constant, that's the 345. And then it gives us the frequency, at, at four, the frequency, um, we have at 1 at 490 and 1 at, at 471, so we can plug in the 490 here, so 345 over 490 is the wavelength at 490. So when you plug those in, what you'll get for, for 471 is uh, roughly 0 0.732484, and the wavelength at 490 is 0 0.704082, and that would equal, that would equal this equi uh, statement. So I, I do the subtraction there, I get negative 0 0.0284 is equal to 2 times the velocity of the source over 490. I'm sorry, the, the frequency at 490, which that is the, that is the frequency is 490. So, and I don't know why I put that negative there, this is actually not negative. It's negative if you, if you do it from the other way. Uh, so this is going to be positive because the train is traveling towards him when the frequency is 490. And so we can multiply uh, this number by 49 by the frequency, so and then divide it by two. So we can take 0 0.0204 um, times times 490 divided by two. This should equal the velocity of the source. I did make one mistake. This should be an eight, so that should be an eight. And if you don't put make that an eight, you get a totally completely incorrect answer. So um, 0 0.0284 minus 490, or times 490, times 490 divided by 2, and that gives you an answer of, uh, of roughly 6.958599, which that would, that would be the frequency that we would get if we plugged in for, uh, for the velocity of the source um, as, it's, as it's leaving, uh, so the velocity of the source at, four, at 471. Okay, so that way it took a little bit longer to explain this because this idea of using these wavelengths um, really isn't covered in the textbook, but I, I kind of was able to come up with it from concepts in the textbook. So you can, you can use either way. I think this way is a little bit easier because it doesn't require as much algebra as the other way. But, uh, and, I, of course, I showed you the algebra on this way. I didn't show you the algebra on the other way. I just plugged it in. So I think this way is a little bit easier.